I'm Senator Michelle Benson. I know that the potential of our children is the potential of Minnesota. We have one of the biggest education gaps in the nation. The status quo education system is leaving some of our children behind. It is immoral to leave children trapped in failing schools. ESAs, as Senator Roger Chamberlain will tell you, will give Minnesota families a path forward. It returns the focus to the children and not to the system. ESAs empower parents. Parents are the primary educators of their children and when parents partner with teachers, kids succeed. Kids and parents have waited long enough for choice. This is the time for choice in Minnesota. We can empower parents. This should be common ground. We should all agree that parents are best equipped to meet the unique needs of their children and we should support them in education choice for their children. I'd like to introduce Oradala Taylor. She is one of the parents who've come to demand choice for Minnesota's children. Welcome. Thank you, Senator Benson. My name is Oradala Taylor. I'm a mom of three boys and um, I am here supporting ESAs, education savings accounts to return a little bit of the power back to the parents that we've lost in the public school system. I've discovered through my years of raising my, my boys, my oldest is 16, that education is a money-making enterprise and our kids are the, uh, are the commodity. The three um, partners in, in, in wrong, I should say on this one, that I've discovered personally, the district, the unions, and the Democratic Party. My kids went to one of the best public schools in the St. Paul public school systems, L'Etoile du Nord French Immersion. Seven, about seven years ago, Superintendent Silver came in and destroyed the school, one of the lowest achievement gaps between blacks and other, uh, minor, other groups. It had one of the best education outcomes. The school did not fit the narrative that our kids black, brown, Hispanic, Asian, couldn't perform. So they went about and destroyed the school. And I could talk to you about all the different things that they did. Now it's just a run of the mill school. So our kids can achieve, but education is no longer the business of the public school system. Money is. The second partner in this is the unions. The money that they get in the classrooms through all the administrators and teachers and and staff and support staff and now counselors and other things they're asking for, the money comes back to them. And that money they use to fund the Democratic Party. So our kids have now become a commodity. And one other thing I will say is poor outcomes equals more cash. The more that they can make our kids fail, the more they can come back and ask for more money. The more that they can make our kids create turmoil in the classroom, racial division, strife, the more they can come back for more programs. The more they can create violence and talk, you know, all the things they implemented that took away discipline in the schools under the guise of equity, the more they can come back and ask for more cash for counselors, for, for guidance, for, for you know, psychologists. It's all about commoditizing our kids and parents you need to be aware and you need to do something about this. Education savings accounts, we need to demand that from our legislators. We need to, a little bit more control so we can get our kids out of failing schools and into schools that are determined to educate them. Thank you. Good afternoon and thanks for being here. My name's Dawn Beavers and I'm a mother to a 13 year old in middle school. And this year really taught us about school choice and demanding that parents have other options. I was a public school teacher, so I'm the last person I would think would be up here thinking about school choice. But this last year, it changed everything. Our daughter is an only child and she really struggled throughout the pandemic and through the school shutdowns. She came to us and just begged to go to school. She needed a building, she needed teachers in front of her, and she needed other children around her. And so we made the decision to move her to a private school that was open every single day this year. And it changed her entire outlook. She went from being depressed 
and having to go see um, a counselor to loving school and making straight A's. We have to demand that parents have a choice. Why is my daughter the only one that is able to do this and not students in failing schools in St. Paul and Minneapolis? Why did their parents not have that same choice that me and my husband had to send our daughter to a private school that met her needs? That is what this is about. This is about our students. This is about um, the money that parents don't have to be paying in taxes and then also to be paying in private schools. So we are asking for some of that money, not all of that money, just some of that money to follow the child so that the parents have more choice. We have demanded a meeting with Governor Walls and the Democratic Party leadership and they have refused. So we are here on the first day that the Capitol is open asking them to meet with us and let's discuss the options and let's move this forward so that we can have children that are all able to achieve at a high level. My name is uh, Sam Chi and I'm from Cambodia. The, re re the reason I'm here today is because the current public school system is not doing enough. That is a plain and simple fact. Despite still being the most popular destination for international students, the American public school system has some glaring issues. Those who are stuck in a poor neighborhood have to suffer through a poorly funded public school with poor facilities. They have tiny school lunches. They have inadequate an, um, amount of textbooks and computers. And the curriculum there are politically biased. And these are just a few of the issues that they have. These are factors that inhibit students, the next generation of Minnesotans, from discovering their true potential. And these factors can be solved through the education savings account. It allows students and their family the free choice of school, and most significantly, the opportunity to attend a private school instead of a public school. As a student that has seen what a public school education is like compared to a private school education, I can genuinely say that my private school education has propelled me further in a way that no public school education would have. When COVID first hit America, we quickly transitioned to online learning with ease while still maintaining the same standard of learning we always had. And this year, when every public school stayed closed, we managed to stay open while still keeping the necessary COVID precautions. We wore masks, we socially distanced, and we sanitized, all so that we could stay open and allow kids a safe place to attend school. This not only helps the students themselves, but the parents as well. It keeps the parents at peace, knowing that they can work, concentrate on their work, and their kids are at school safe and learning. We can solve this, we can help students get this through the education savings account. Governor Waltz needs to see this through if he wants the next generation of Minnesotans to be better educated. Hello, my name is um, Earlene, AKA Mac, and my, my children are adults, but I'm a taxpayer. And I support Ordella and everyone who has children in the uh, public school system. And my question, I have lots of questions. One, I want to know why isn't uh, Governor Walls out here? And why are, 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 are you, you as parents and we as taxpayers, why are our backs pushed against the wall over this issue? This is a crisis. Why aren't these people out here listening to us? I would like to know, Governor Walls, I wish you were out here. How is your child being educated? What's going on? What did he, he or she do during the COVID crisis? And all the people who are in Minnesota education. And I also like to know what is the obstacle? What is stopping you from giving parents school choice? Is it money? Yeah. We know it is. Is it the union? Yeah, we know it is. These people need to be out here listening to you. This, this uh, facility should be packed. 
not with just a few parents standing here begging. You should not have to beg for school choice for your children. There are three essentials that our children need, reading, writing, and arithmetic. And they're, they're deficient in it. Why? Why is that happening? Answer the question, Governor Walz. Answer the question, education, uh, Minnesota education. Why is that happening? Why is it that people like Oradella, she's been fighting this for years, years. Why is that? Why? This should have been decided years ago. And while they're sitting in their offices and Governor Walz is sitting in his office debating whether you should or should not have school choice, the kids are sitting in the classroom. And what are they doing? They're not learning, Governor Walz. You need to do something. What are you doing? And why are we waiting? Why are we waiting? Why have we had to wait all this time? And look where we are. We're still in square one. I brought a timer with me. I used this when my kids were growing up to make sure that they behaved. And, I, and they had privileges. I thought we were gonna be timed today. So I wanted, didn't wanna run over my time because I easily could. Now I learned that he's, back, uh, uh, Governor Walz is inside and he will be doing a press conference. I would like to take this in there and time him and then be able to ask him these questions that I just asked. What are you doing? Why are you waiting? We are tired of waiting, Governor Walz. It's time to move. We cannot waste the time. We cannot waste any more time on these kids not learning. We are way past that. Do what you do your job. Do what you need to do for these parents. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll make this quick because you all know that the governor's up there, right there inside that uh, uh, rotunda, right? So I'm going to take 20 seconds and say, you go up there and you relay what they've said. And you relay what they said last Thursday. And you look at the websites. You look at all the stuff they put out there. Then you go up there and do what you need to do and ask him, why don't you give these parents the opportunity? Why don't you meet with them? You're right here, Governor Walz. They want a meeting with you. And you said no. They're right here, Chair Dabney, Chair Richardson, and you won't meet with them. I can't add to anything they've said. You all know what it is. If you want to know more about the problems and the challenges, what this is really about, you all know my number, and you know where to get a hold of me. But until then, go straight up there and ask him, ask him to meet with them. Because they're going to walk right up there when they're done here. And they're going to be standing in the crowd with those signs. So thank you very much. God bless all of you. Good luck. And give us the choice. Parental choice.